Levante David officially re-signed with the Buccaneers. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this Friday episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JRCO underscore Bucks, credentialed member of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers. And for that, I'm going to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. One of the ways you can support the show is become a Locked On Bucks insider. You're going to get news, rumors, updates, just general thoughts, plus one-on-one conversations with me via text message. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Bucks to become an insider today. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hopefully, you didn't get started by picking Kentucky to win in the first round of the NCAA tournament. But I, I digress. Want to apologize real quick. First and foremost, I wanted to go live much, much sooner. Was dealing with being under the weather a little bit today. So I got home, took some medicine, got a little bit of rest. But we are here now. And it's going to be mailbag time, diving into my favorite draft prospects and how the Bucks can get a home field advantage. That is coming up in a little bit. But first, let's start with the return of one of the most important players on the team, and that is Levante David, who officially re-signed with the Bucks on Friday. There was a press conference held with Jason Light and Levante David, as you would expect, and there was no shortage of praise for the longtime Buccaneer. Jason Light opened things up by saying, quote, I've given this some thought. It's really an honor and a privilege for all of us that in that get to work in this business that aren't players to be in the NFL because of the fact that most of us have a lot of passion and love for this game. The reason we love it is because we get to be around great players. But what makes this even more special is we're with elite players like Levante. He's elite in every way as a person, as a player, his stats. It's not even really his stats. He's not really a tackle collector. He makes these plays when they count in very consistently. He's playing at the best level that he's ever played right now, and he'll continue to do that. He's on a Hall of Fame track for sure. Levante responded by saying, best words I've ever heard spoken. I appreciate that. Like I said before, I thank you for the constant communication and the will to be able to get this thing done. For me to be able to come back for another year, obviously it's a dream of mine and a dream of anybody's to play all of your tenure for one organization. I want to say thank you to the Glazer family, to everybody for making this happen for me and my family. I'm definitely grateful and thankful. Like I said, I appreciate those kind words, but I'm definitely going to prove you right by getting this opportunity again. I have one more quote from Levante David that I want to share before I get to my point about Levante David. And he was asked about the potential of the 2024 Buccaneers team. And Levante said, quote, we were very close. We were very close. I said in the locker room after the end of the of the Detroit Lions playoff game, I told them, keep your head high. You have nothing to be down about. We had a great season. A lot of people counted us out. A lot of people doubted us, especially when we were four and seven. We climbed up out of that, and that goes to show what type of team we have. To get those key pieces back, we can build off that. Obviously, having Mike and Bake back, bringing back Winfield Jr. and myself, it just shows that we can do great things offensively and defensively. 
I'm definitely looking forward to it. Winning the division, that was pretty cool and all, but we're definitely trying to get the big thing, end quote. We all know how important Levante was to the team, both in the locker room and on the field. He has been the consummate leader over his tenure in Tampa. And that quote jumped out to me because that's exactly who he is. That was not a fun locker room to go into after that game. Those players just had their hearts ripped out and their season was ended. But Levante was the voice, the guy who was there for 2-14, and 14, the guy who played for Greg Schiano and the disaster that was Lovey Smith, who was on a last place team in the NFC South for six of his first seven seasons. And he had only played for a team that finished with a winning record one time until that Super Bowl run in 2020. He was in Tampa with Rondé Barber and Vincent Jackson and Gerald McCoy. He was there through the Josh Freeman and, and the Doug Martin roller coaster. You can't teach that kind of experience. You can't teach someone the kind of adversity that Levante David had to face and to keep battling back and to keep fighting instead of running off to another team and another situation that probably would have been better. Put aside the on-field production. This is what Levante David brings to this Buccaneers team. Loyalty, trust, dedication, passion, love, perseverance. To be that constant in the building over the course of the last 13 years now, being the leader that's going to help these young guys learn what it means to be a professional, the guy that dedicated over a decade to the community and stays with them through the bad because he knows what it means for Tampa and Buccaneers fans to experience the good. That's who Levante David is. That is why it was so important for the Buccaneers to make sure that he came back, to make sure that he stayed with this franchise that he was drafted by in 2012. This might be Levante's last year in the NFL. We don't know. As Jason pointed out, he's still playing some of the best football he has ever played. But you also have to think that this is going to be 13 years of professional football, of wear and tear on his body physically, emotionally, this could be it. So to be able to have a guy that is a Hall of Fame player that maybe the national media just can't figure out how to see, to stay with a team where he basically had his teeth kicked in year after year after year because he wanted to be with this franchise. He wanted to be a part of a team for those fans because he knew on the other side, there was going to be opportunity to succeed and have playoff games and, and potentially win championships, which he finally did. That is why Bucks fans are so glad that Levante David is back. Of course, they're happy to have him back because of what he does on the field. But off the field, inside the Advent Health Training Center, on the sidelines, in the locker room, in the film room, Levante David is one of one for the Buccaneers. And before this show started, David Stacks and I were in the chat talking about how Pewter Report had brought up, you know, who is the best all-time linebacker for the Buccaneers? Was it Derek Brooks or was it Levante David? And you can draw parallels to these guys. Derek Brooks was drafted to the Yucks and stuck with it and won a championship. Levante David was drafted to a Buccaneers team with Greg Schiano as the leader, with Mark Dominic as the general manager to go through the alarm clock number uniform years with Jameis Winston and Lovey Smith and, and Dirk Cutter. And then to come out on the other side with Bruce Arians, with Todd Bowles, with a Lombardi trophy, 
there's a lot of parallels between these two and two of in the both of them consummate professionals unquestioned leaders and they were leaders by example Derek Brooks was never the yell and shout and boisterous and loudmouth kind of guy that his teammate Warren Sapp was Levante is very much the same way. He is going to lead you by example. And he's going to go out there and he's going to get his job done every single week. But behind closed doors, in that locker room, in that film room, when he speaks, everybody listens. And honestly, if you are a Buccaneers fan, you should take a moment to take a step back and think, wow, how lucky are we? that we got to witness now coming up 13 years of Levante David in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform. We are going to jump into the mailbag and talk a little bit about the NFL draft. That is coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. I know for me, between my day job, the podcast, and traveling every weekend due to my son's schedule, I find myself drained faster and faster every day, but still having to push through in all situations, telling myself it's for the greater good, regardless of how I feel in the moment often ignoring my own needs in service of others. Speaking to someone on the outside without a personal bias in my day-to-day life can be extremely beneficial and help me reshuffle what I view as a priority versus what should actually be a priority. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Every day is make sure you are coming back on Monday. Of course, it'll be a mock draft Monday, but some potential rule changes coming in the NFL, and one of which I think could actually really be a lot of fun. That is going to be coming up on Monday's episode. But are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your television all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Time to jump into the Insider Mailbag. And we're going to start off with one from Insider Tim, who asked a question after I had texted the Insiders to let them know exactly how not happy I was during the network mock draft Thursday night. And uh, Tim asked, James, glad you think you got a good player, but you thought you had moves made and ended up getting stuck. If the Bucks stick at 26 Who are the best players for them that would likely be available? And that is a great question and one that I've been thinking a little bit about. I know I've seen some people in the YouTube chat mention it a couple of times, but you guys know my positions of most importance for the Bucs. But as I faced, uh, as as I was kind of going through this network mock draft, um, you know, things don't always go as planned. Sometimes there's a guy you think is going to be there and he's not. Sometimes there's a run on a position. Sometimes there's a guy that drops that you didn't expect to be there. But that's why we love the draft. Sports are the ultimate reality show. 
Uh, and the chaos is both loved and feared. And I say this as Yale is currently beating Auburn with less than a minute left in March Madness. All the chaos. We love it. We fear it. We are here for it. But, Tim, I'm going to give you kind of my power rankings for the best fits for the Bucks at pick 26. So first and foremost, Jared Verse. Now, I have him first for a few reasons. Number one, he's the longest shot to make it to 26. It's not impossible, but it's a long shot. But there's a reason it's a long shot, and it's because he's so freaking good. Uh, Verse is probably going to be the second or third edge rusher off the board behind Dallas Turner of Alabama and then Latu out of UCLA. But there's probably going to be some teams that are a little concerned with Latu's uh, medicals. So there's a chance that, you know, maybe Verse goes ahead of him. But Verse is 6'4", 255 pounds. And he brings that huge frame screaming off the edge. At the combine, he ran a 4.5840 with a 1.6 second split. And that's incredible for a guy his size. He was a second team AP All American. He was a first team All ACC last year. He had 41 tackles, nine sacks, 12 and a half tackles for loss, three passes defense, uh, a forced fumble, and a blocked kick because why not? And then back in 2022, Again, he was first team all ACC, had nine sacks to go along with 16 and a half tackles for a loss. This guy is an immediate impact player that elevates the pass rush from the moment he laces up his cleats. My second choice is Chop Robinson, who I've talked on this show about quite a bit. And I've talked about him more than Jared Verse because I feel like the likelihood that Chop Robinson is there at 26 rather than Jared Verse is much, much higher. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on Chop, but he's a freak athlete that's a little raw. His athletic profile from size, power, uh, speed, it's already being compared to that of Micah Parsons. So you put him in a Todd Bowles defense to be coached up by Bowles, and Casey Rogers and George Edwards, this guy could be the next big thing in the NFL when it comes to edge rushers and getting after the quarterback. So love Chop Robinson. I think he would be a great addition. Third on my list is Graham Barton. That's another guy that I've talked about on the show a couple of times, and I do believe that he will be there at 26. He's the best guard in the draft. He's a plug-and-play starter, and just warning you now, if the Bucs draft him, I'm officially naming Graham Barton the crockpot because you just set it and forget it. He is going to be a huge addition to whatever team he goes to, both literally and figuratively. But he would really solidify the spot between Hainsey and Wirfs that would make the entire offensive line look better. Those inside running lanes that were non-existent last year, the inside pressure that got after Baker that caused him to have to escape a lot of, of sacks, that's going to drop exponentially with the addition of Barton. Yeah, he finished the combine as the top-ranked center based on next-gen stats athletic profile scores, but he's projected to switch to guard in the NFL, which is where the Bucks would line him up. Fourth on my list, and this one I might get a little flack for, uh, feel free to give me some grief in the chat um, because to me, this isn't a guy that would be a day one starter. He's probably going to be a starter by the end of the season, and he's a for sure starter moving into a second year, but it's Kool-Aid McKinstry, the corner out of Alabama. And I'm breaking my own rules putting him here because he's that good. He's smaller than the prototypical Todd Bowles corner. Comes in just under six foot, but my God, goodness. This kid is fast. He is insanely intelligent when it comes to football IQ, incredibly athletic, and there is no one that he has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with that he cannot cover. Lance Zerline named his NFL comparison as A.J. Terrell, but and we know how good Terrell is, but take a look at the wide receivers that McKinstry would have to go up against in, you know, within the division twice a year. You got Chris Olave, Drake London, Darnell Mooney, Deontay Johnson, Jonathan Mingo. This guy has faced better competition 
than, than these guys for most of his time in Alabama. And I'm not saying that these, these wide receivers aren't good. I'm just saying that within the SEC, Alabama tends to face the elite of the elite talent when they don't have the elite of the elite talent. And when they do, now you're facing them every day in practice. So this kid is already weathered, worn, ready. So he's, he's even though corner isn't crazy high on my list of needs, his talent is just too much to overlook. And I'm still not crazy about the depth at corner, even though they made some moves with Bryce Hall and uh, Tav, uh, Tavier Thomas. I, I'm still not crazy about the depth if Dean or McCollum miss extended time. Then I've mentioned on here the potential to move on from Dean after the season. You already have then an elite prospect in waiting to be your starter in 2025 that has a year in the system. And we know how difficult this system in the scheme is for guys in the secondary to learn. There is a drastic learning curve. So now you already have that out of the way and you got have a guy of Kool-Aid's talent ready and waiting to be your starter. And then finally, Darius Robinson, another plug and play edge guy at 6'5", 285. He ran a 4'9", 540, but he had a 173 split, which shows you the get off can be pretty quick. Last year, he was a first team all SEC, had eight and a half sacks, 14 tackles for loss, and was a team captain, which I think is very important because it shows that he is a leader. He is respected by his teammates, and he's going to bring a level of professionalism with him, even as a rookie. He's not verse, he's not chop, but he's far from being a consolation prize. Going to jump into the chat real fast uh, and see what you guys are saying. Um, we got G Vegas says Kool-Aid is better than the purple stuff. Kool-Aid's delicious, man. I love Kool-Aid. It's been a long time since I've had it. Used to make it all the time. All the neighborhood kids used to come over to my driveway to play basketball. And when we had a bunch of kids out there, I was making Kool-Aid for everybody to drink in between games because it was either that or water. And we were all a bunch of like 10 and 11 year olds. We didn't want water. We wanted Kool-Aid with six cups of sugar mixed into it. Um, we have Rick dog dog saying we have a goat in Mike Evans. Well, you know, can't, can't argue that at all, but, uh, yeah, definitely appreciate all you guys being in the chat, but another insider question came through asking, how can the bucks build a better home field advantage that is coming up next on today's episode of locked on bucks. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, over-unders, anything you can think of. You can even pick who's going to win it all. The favorite to win it all and go back to back is UConn at plus 370, while Houston is plus 550, Purdue is plus 700, Arizona is plus 1200, and Auburn rounds out the top five at plus 1500. Meanwhile, my beloved Illini is sitting at plus 3500 odds to cut down the nets. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down those nets. Wrapping things up here on a Friday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Going to jump over to the chat real quick one more time. David in the chat says, how come my kids hate Kool-Aid? Anyone else's? Uh, more sugar. I used to get the, the lemonade Kool-Aid, and I would add so much sugar that it tasted like those old um, lemon head candies that were coated in sugar. Yeah, those things were awesome. Um, we have a manual in the chat. It says, are we ever going to see Godwin wear number 12 again? Hashtag make Godwin 12 again. I don't think we are. Um, I think he's happy being number 14. Even though, you know, 12 obviously had a very special and important meaning to Chris Godwin. He gave that number up. I think 
I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see anyone wear the number 12 in Tampa for quite some time. Uh, and I also wouldn't be surprised if we see um, Tom Brady inducted in the ring of honor sooner rather than later. But I think Godwin is is happy being 14 and uh, it's it's going to stay that way. But we have another mailback question from Insider Scotty who says, James, what do you think it will take to get more butts in the seats at home games? I've been to a couple, but being in the Midwest, it's a special event for me. We never got Tampa news back in the Selman days. I get winning, we'll do it, but we will have to have home field advantage. We didn't have that last year. Here's the thing, Scotty. The Bucks are never going to be a team with a true home field advantage. Even in the Brady years, you saw other teams invading the stadium, not to the level that they did before or to the level that they did last season, but it was still happening. And there's a few reasons for that. So you talk about Tampa in the surrounding areas. They're generally primarily transplant cities. And when people move there, they don't just get rid of their previous allegiances to sports teams. They may root for the Bucs, but more often than not, they're going to say, yeah, I root for the Bucs unless they're playing Team X because that's their real favorite team. That's the team that they rooted for growing up. That's you know the area that they moved from, and they're not going to just give that up, but they're going to support the local team. Here's a perfect example from me personally. So you all know that I am a University of Illinois fan. I got the Illinois hat on right now. You see the block eye behind me. For those of you watching on the live or on YouTube later, I am an Illinois fan. I have always been an Illinois fan. When it comes to college basketball, I'm also a University of Dayton fan. I grew up going to UD games with my dad and watching the old UD Xavier rivalry before Xavier left the, the A-10. And I always root for the Flyers to do well. I was so disappointed when the March Madness in 2020 got shut down because the Dayton Flyers had a legitimate shot at being national champions with Obi Toppin. And I was heartbroken that the tournament got canceled. But if they play against Illinois, which is rare and it may never happen, I don't, thinking back, I don't think it's ever happened in my lifetime. But if they play against Illinois, I'm still rooting for Illinois because that is my team. I have that caveat. It's the same thing with football. I root for Notre Dame because my son is a huge Notre Dame fan. So we watch the games together and I root for Notre Dame to support him. I love South Bend, Indiana. I love that campus. I love when my son and I get to go there for hockey tournaments, but I wouldn't root for them against Illinois. I just wouldn't do it. So you have a lot of that in the Tampa area where people have moved from New York or Canada or Pennsylvania or Massachusetts or Ohio, and they aren't going to give up their favorite team, but they'll root for the local team until there's a conflict. You also see it happening with the lightning. Watch a lightning game when the Bruins are in town. The, the Maple Leafs are in town. The Penguins are in town. Uh, there's a huge influx of opposing team fans because the other issue is that it's a tourist state and a tourist city. And these games are tourist destinations. As soon as the schedule comes out, fans in cold weather cities want to take a nice warm weather vacation in November or December, and they will make the game the centerpiece of that trip. You're going to see it in Miami. You're going to see it in Los Angeles. You're going to see it in Jacksonville. That Bucks game will be a planned trip by a Bills fan or an Eagles fan or a Ravens fan when that game is around Thanksgiving. Or maybe it's close to the kids' uh, winter break from school so they don't have to miss any school. And now you can go from the cold weather down to a place where you're wearing shorts three days after Christmas. I know probably 20 different people that went to the Bengals game in Tampa two years ago because that game was in December and it was cold and crappy in Ohio and they wanted to go watch their team coming off of a uh, a Super Bowl appearance face Tom Brady in the warm weather. So 
the home field advantage, like you see in Seattle or you see in Kansas City or Buffalo or places like that, it's just not going to happen in Tampa. If they're winning, you'll see less of it, but it's too much about the people that moved here and the people that want to come visit here that create crowds where visiting teams invade Raymond James Stadium. They want to escape the nasty weather where they live, have a nice trip with them and, and you know the family or the kids or the wife or the husband or whoever. And so they come somewhere nice with their football team or their hockey team being the centerpiece of their trip. So with all that said, I'm going to jump into the chat. Uh, one more time real quick. Uh, David in the chat says, do you think they'll retire 12? I don't know. That's tough. Uh, kind of the general rule has been, if you're in the ring of honor in the hall of fame, they're not giving your number back out. Uh, so I think the officially retired numbers in Tampa are 63, 99, 55, 47, and 20. 40 is not retired. It's just not generally given out. Um, I don't know if they retire 12 for Brady, even though he already holds most of the passing records in franchise history and brought him a Lombardi. I think Mike Evans is locked and loaded. Um, you know, he's going to have his number retired. Um, Levante locked and loaded. He's going to have his number retired. Um, outside of that, I, I would say anybody else is kind of up in the air. Uh, Daytona dad, do you think Levante and or Mike Evans will have their Jersey numbers retired in Tampa? Yes, I do. Daytona dad. Yes, I absolutely do. Um, Scotty J in the chat, uh, says, haha, just like me, special event, go bucks. Yep. Scotty, I hope I, uh, I answered your question. All right. And real quick, I have to throw this out there. My dad just texted me. It popped up on my screen. Uh, and he just said, take that Evan Klosky, who said that Illinois was going to lose and Auburn was his sleepy choice to win the national championship. They lost to Yale. So there's that. And that's the note that we are going to end on. So please check out everything going on over at BucksNation.com. Make sure you're following on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArco underscore Bucks. Become a Locked on Bucks insider. Go to JoinSubtext.com slash LockedOnBucks to sign up there. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube with the notifications turned on, and we will be back on Monday. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. want to thank you so much for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs>